All right, so what I've got in Vice is a balanced leech. Uh, a little more specifically, it's a mohair balanced leech, but uh, you can see we've got a bunch of uh, metallic brown uh, starburst fibers in there. Uh, these fibers come from uh, Fly Tires Dungeon, and uh, they're quite a bit, uh, they're three inches long maybe. And uh, they're fantastic for stuff like this. Uh, a balanced leech is typically, it's going to fish like this. You can see the hook eye there. Uh, we need the weight out front to keep the fly when it's tied on, riding like this. Let me get that turned around. And you can kind of compare the two, and you'll see that it shrinks down quite a bit. So even though it looks super huge, it's going to actually end up being like this and be uh, somewhat buoyant in the water, and it's going to give a nice little jig action like this. Um, these are typically fished under an indicator, uh, still water situations. I think I already said that. So without further ado, let's get tying this thing. Um, kind of a cool pattern. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, so what hook I'm using here is an Eagle Claw 570. And the thread I'm using here is just a Danville 140. Um, sorry for the reflection. Just a Danville 140 in olive. Uh, thread color doesn't matter a whole lot here. Um, if you feel more comfortable using black, use black. Or if you want to add something, say, a little more shiny, like a, a fluorescent uh, thread, you can do that as well. Totally up to you. Change the colors around. Uh, Fly Tires Dungeon's got some pretty cool colors to choose from, from those fibers. Um, so the first thing we need to do is get our extension. And what I'm using here is a uh, wire nail. It's an 18 gauge wire nail. Here's the box. I just got this at uh, Ace Hardware. It's a two ounce box. I don't know how, I have no idea how many nails are in there. It was about three bucks. Uh, so it'll, you know, if you buy one of these for three bucks, it'll last a long time. Now, the reason I chose a one inch is because we, all we have to do is clip off the tip of the nail. You're going to need some heavy duty wire cutters, uh, not some little crappy cheap ones, but you'll need something that's pretty good. And we're just going to clip it off right there at the end. Um, taking off about about an eighth of an inch um, or so and uh, I recommend that you when you do this uh, you keep the this side of the I don't know what they call it the uh, <laughs> convex side I guess of the uh, wire cutter uh, on the shaft of the nail and the concave side uh, down and then I what I do is I, I take this like, like this, uh, and then I'll put it down into like a trash can or something that it's cause these will fire off this little, this little tip that we're going to cut off will fire off. Uh, you know, so be careful. Uh, don't, don't allow that to get in your eye or anything like that. Um, so just for convenience sake, we're not going to use that. So I'm going to slide my, I'll show you the bead in a second. But I'm going to slide my bead on. And we have, uh, this is a tungsten bead. It's a cyclops bead, just meaning it has uh, one hole. I'm trying to show you. So there's the small hole. So we want the small hole coming out the back of the nail. And we have the big hole coming towards the nail head. And when you use this size of uh, bead and wire nail, uh, you're going to get you're going to get a really nice fit or really close fit that's just like this. If you turn it around, uh, this little head will be popping out. I guess you, you can use some UV or something if you have to. You can also use sequin pens. The problem with sequin pens is they, uh, they're they they're pretty flimsy. Uh, they're cheap, but they're fit, they're flimsy. Uh, and wire nails are just as cheap. And, uh, and so if, a, if you had a fish strike really hard, um, you know, it could it could bend the the front end of your fly, and uh, your fly would essentially be trash. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start my thread behind the 90 degree bend, and I'm just going to work this back to the hook point. 
Uh, this is why I chose a one inch nail for the size six hook. Uh, so it's a pretty good size hook. And we'll trim out this tag. <clears throat> and next we're gonna take our uh, already loaded bead onto our wire nail. And I'm gonna line this up so this just right in line with the hook point, pretty close. And it's gonna extend way out front. We need this extra weight all out front to balance the fly. We have to counteract all the weight uh, that we're gonna add to it um, through water and uh, you know gravity and everything else. We have, to, we have to counter that so it balances out. Because otherwise, you know, if you have too much material back here, it's gonna tip this way. If you have too much weight up front, it's gonna tip this way. So you may have to, if you're gonna change hook sizes, you're gonna, and, and all that kind of thing, you're gonna need to play with this a little bit uh, to figure out exactly what you need. A lot of the times you'll see uh, people tie these on like size 10 fly tying hooks. Uh, this is not a traditional fly tying hook. And so we're gonna wrap back right to where uh, we cut this off. Now you've gotta, you, you've gotta keep your thread away from that because you're gonna have a sharp edge here. We're gonna fix that in just a second using material. So I'm going to slide this around and kind of sweep it down and around to keep my thread from being uh, clipped. And we're going to work that back to the barb. Next what we need is a piece of marabou. Uh, this fly is great for that trash marabou. You know, you, we, we all get these packs of marabou and then there's like these, uh, you know, two or three pieces that are just kind of sort of rubbish similar to this one right like the tips are kind of wonky and the, it just it doesn't sit right it's got a lot of extra fluff well something like this is going to work great for the tail on this uh, the tail is going to be it's a hidden tail uh, and it's just going to kind of help everything in the back end flow so what we want is uh, we want a stretch of this marabou at, at the tip side that equals the distance or maybe just a tad bit past the distance of the bend and once we have that, we're going to set it down right on top of where our thread is at the barb. And we're just going to place a couple of wraps in. And if you're following along with the classes, uh, save all of this that we're getting ready to cut off here in just a second, because you're going to be able to, we exclusively need all of this stuff uh, for the next fly. So that's week six. But uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to tie that in and we're just going to start placing spiral wraps going forward. They don't have to be pretty. They don't have to be close. We just need to get this tied down up to the backside of the bend. And we're going to trim this out. And then again, just take this and put it in a pile and save it because uh, you'll be able to use all that same material uh, for the next class if you're following along with the classes. And we're just going to tie that down and then we're going to start to come back. Okay, so once we get just past the drop off right here, I'm putting my finger there so you can kind of see the drop off. What we want to do is we need to add the basically the last material that we're going to use which is actually mohair. Uh, so this is sort of a mohair leech uh, with some flash involved. And so what I have here is a, uh, for this size hook on a size six with the extension, uh, we need uh, roughly four and a half inches. Um, if you're not comfortable with your wrapping, we're going to do some kind of, we're going to do a different wrapping technique here, uh, which can be a little tricky. Uh, I'm not sure that adding extra is going to help you at all. But I've got about I've got about four and a half inches here. We're going to take just this tip. Get that marabou sticking right out the back, and we're going to tie this in right there at the back, just like so. We're going to bring our thread right back up to right where our nail ended. And I've got a little clip here. I'm going to clip this out of the way so it's not in my way. You fold the material over or whatever it is you need to do. Add a few extra wraps in. That's all good. Next what I want to do is I want to add a dubbing loop right here. And so I've rolled it over my thread 
I'm bringing it up around and what we want to do is we want to tie this in so that the mohair and the dubbing loop meet at the same point so if you're struggling uh, getting them to do this and you probably won't know until we actually wrap the body uh, or the, uh, the the exterior body um, you can actually just keep everything backed off with like two turns tying your mohair put your dubbing loop in and then wrap both of them back together at the same time you can also lift both of them up together if you need to and make sure that they're touching you want these you want these as tight as possible right here and we're going to get this out of the way uh, so for the underbody what I'm going to use here is just some rayon chenille in black and I'm going to tie this in on the top side and it's going to fill in this gap my bodkin here but it's going to fill in this gap right here and so if it comes up a little bit over, it's no big deal. Um, but we're going to fill that gap in. And then we're, we're going to bring our thread all the way forward to behind the bead. Okay, so next we're going to take our chenille. We're going to kind of twist it flat because the rayon chenille has got these uh, short kind of sp sparser fibers and sometimes they need to be massaged out in this kind of a manner where you're just kind of twisting and unrolling um, to kind of get it fluffy. Uh, it's not crucial so if you can't get it quite perfect fluffy don't don't worry about it it's not going to make or break the fly. But we're just going to start wrapping this guy forward and so now that as we filled in the gap on that back side between the nail and where our tie-off point was at the tail at the barb that's going to fill this gap in. Now we can bring this forward all the way up. Rayon uh, chenille is notorious for losing a little bit here and there. That's why it's not heavily used, but it works very well for the purposes here. It's super cheap uh, and it works well. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap this up. You'll see that there's a taper going forward. That's okay. That's kind of what we want here. And we're just going to bring this all the way up. So when you get up to the front of the fly, and you're kind of in line with your thread, uh, the way that you can hide this thread, if that's what you're looking to do, the color of the thread, you can do it two ways. You can take a Sharpie marker and color it whatever color you're making the body, or you can actually take this, wrap it in front of your thread, and then just angle your chenille to the back and then take two thread rip, uh, th thread wraps let them slide directly over the bead can you see like that thread's going right over the bead and down you just pull down tight now your thread is basically completely covered and you can trim this off um, if you're not comfortable with this just add, take a little uh, super glue or head cement, rub it right on your uh, thread, and just place a couple of wraps in. If there's a little bit of thread exposed, again, this is, this is not a big deal. This is not a make or break part of the fly. Uh, there's actually not a lot of those on this one. This is a, just a couple different techniques. So first what we want to do is we want to take our dubbing loop, bring it down and out of the way, and we're going to take our mohair, I'm trying to get this to where you guys can see it. And we're going to start stroking this out in one direction. Uh, you can just, just use your fingers. You don't really need a, a brush or anything. Uh, if your mohair is super sparse in areas, maybe you get a little bodkin in there and pick a little, little more out. Uh, something like that. I mean, it's possible. Mohair is a, a very inconsistent material. And we're just going to keep doing that until we have as much as possible floating in one direction. So in this case, I've got, you can see I've got it all standing up. And we're going to just gently get that out of the way. Be careful with the clip here because it, it will uh, collapse that material again. And 
will come through on the back side. But if you need to use a little toothbrush action here or bodkin action here, uh, don't be afraid to do it. Just, just be careful the way you lay it so we can line it up with our fibers. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're just going to twist this. Now we've got our dubbing loop. Now you can do this two ways. Uh, actually, both are pretty effective. You can use a dubbing twister, which I'm going to use here. Or you can use uh, just a good pair of uh, pliers, uh, hackle pliers, to keep this open. And next we're going to go to our starburst fiber. Uh, so this is pretty long fiber, as you can see. And we're going to use pretty much all of this, but what we want to do for the for an amount, I'm sure people are wondering like how much is that amount? It looks like a whole lot. So when I take this and I twist it together like this and form a little rope between my uh, thumbs, you know we're only looking at uh, about uh, half or maybe one third of the width of the chenille here. So that'll kind of give you an idea. So what we want to do, and when you pull this out, I mean it it really needs to be just fine. You can see my fingers through there. Uh, a lot of this goes a long, long way. Like a, it's, uh, it's, it's talked about all the time with dubbing. So we're just going to cut this in half. Sorry, I can't do that on camera without having it all fall apart. <clears throat> so now we've got, we have our cut ends right here. I'm just going to fold them over the top of one another so that we don't have um, we don't have even butt ends at one side, and I'm just going to take it, start to pull it apart, and now we're mixing it all together, and now we've got a great mixture for a dubbing loop. Uh, we need to stick this in our dubbing loop. Uh, I do not use wax on this. It kind of ties the material up. But I want to run this about uh, three, oh, about three and a half inches, four inches. Uh, sparse is good here. Um, if a little of whatever your color thread is showing through, again, not a big deal. You can color this with marker if you need to, or if you feel like that's that's what needs to be done. Um, so we're looking for about three inches in a dubbing loop, similar to this. I'm sorry, I can't get my hand, whole hand in there. Uh, so I'm going to twist that up, let it spin, and. If you do this by hand, all you do is you pinch. You're going to pinch the bottom of this right here. And you're just going to start to twist with your dubbing spinner. It takes a little bit longer, but it can absolutely be done. On the first twist, we're going to take our bodkin. Again, let me try to get this where you can see it. And we're going to run it through there and pull this stuff out so that we are extending all this fiber so it's not trapped anymore. Well, that bug really wanted to, to die. Sorry, it's, we're, it's becoming bug season here in Missouri. And we're going to spin it up again so that we have something like that. Now, if you want shorter fibers and a more colorful... Are you done dying? Good grief. I need to start a bloopers reel. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> we're going to pick this out again. If uh, if you prefer the shorter fiber and the higher color density body, you can leave them short. So you can just twist it up. Something like this and wrap it in something of this nature where it's, it's more full towards the core of the dubbing loop. Uh, if you want it to flow to the back, Take your uh, dubbing spinner in there. And so what's going to happen is, is your dubbing spinner, uh, when you twist this all up, it's going to take up most of that color. So what we need to do, uh, if you want it to flow, is we're gonna, I'm just going to gently lick my fingers and just pull all this one direction. It doesn't really matter where you hold this or anything else. You're just going to kind of fold it in one direction so that most of those fibers are orientated in the same direction like this. Uh, if you prefer it up, down, whatever. Uh, I, I typically prefer it down, but I just don't have a whole lot of room in front of the camera. Okay. We're going to take our hackle pliers. We're going to pinch off the thread. 
back here at the end. Let's see if I can readjust that there. Let's see if I can do it. I'm going to pinch off the thread back there. <laughs> Again, this is an issue with the camera being in the way. So that it's holding on to the, and it won't untwist. It's holding on to the loop and won't untwist. Okay. And now we can simply just trim out the bottom of our dubbing loop. Uh, you don't have to be super precise on this or anything either. Um, you just don't. Uh, this is a real easy fly. I know I'm going about it the long way to explain, but uh, it's just kind of it's kind of part of the nature of the beast when you're trying to teach somebody via uh, YouTube uh, and go through all the ins and outs. So all we're going to do is we're going to take those two fibers. I pulled my mohair down, and I've got my uh, core strand of flash, and I've got my mohair. And we're just going to start to orientate all that in one direction. You can get a toothbrush here if you want, uh, if you think it's necessary, and start to do this. But they kind of start to split apart on you again. Whatever. You can lick your fingers. You can draw them down. Whatever gets whatever gets the material to start to line up like this, like it was strung. Next, all we're going to do is we're just going to take this and we're going to start to palmer it. And the tighter you have these locked in your um, hackle pliers, the better. So you want these two strands to be just side by side all the time or as close as possible. They're going to want to separate. And so we'll take our first wrap over the back. You'll see we've got some fibers trapped there in the gap. I'd say keep your bodkin handy here because we're going to have to do a lot of picking. Uh, fortunately, doing it this way, wrapping these two separate fibers at the same time, uh, what this allows you to do is pick a whole lot less, get your fibers to lay to the back a whole lot more easier. I'm not saying you can't do it other ways. I'm just saying for me, at least me personally, this is a whole lot easier. We're just going to wrap these guys together. And the better you get at this too, uh, it's it's really becomes like no big deal. So we're going to spiral wrap these forward, probably about two bodkin widths between wraps. You can use your fingers, you come around. When I get up behind that hook eye, that's when I'll come through with my bodkin, run it down off each side, just kind of pull out any fibers that are trapped, jump forward, and we're just going to keep doing this all the way up to the thread. Uh, when you start getting up front, the hook eye is going to kind of start to mess with you a little bit, so you may have to do a little more picking and pulling. Uh, but it should it should be pretty light. Uh, I can tell you it'll be a lot easier uh, picking and pulling doing it this way than if you were to, um, say, wrap the mohair and then the flash or whatever, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, I find it much, much easier to do it this way. Just don't have to do it nearly as much. Okay, and we're going to bring this all the way up to right behind the bead. And again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick this out real quick. You pick it out while you're doing it, and it's just not that big of a deal. Uh, again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring this clipped material to the front side of my thread, bring it to the 12 o'clock position, straight up, take my thread, pull tight, and make two wraps over the bead side. I think I fouled on the first one. Uh, and pull down. All that material just got locked into place with two thread wraps. If you're not comfortable with that, you can add some glue right there. You can just cut all this out. Now the leech is basically built. Um, so next what I'm going to do is, if you can see, right in this area right here. I've got a little uh, green tag coming off that we missed. We'll cut that out. But all this extra stuff off the cutoff, just take a thread wrap or two right through the middle of that pull down. And if you have a little bit of color coming through right there, it's not a big deal. This is the part where if you have, like say, colored thread uh, and you wanted to build like a little hot spot, you could actually just build a little hot spot right here. You can color the thread too, 
Uh, you know, if, if you if you really just hate it and you don't like the look of it, which is probably not a big deal, but you can take your marker, run up and down on it, uh, place a few more thread wraps in, uh, like so, just to make it black. If that's if, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. I, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, so we'll just kind of continue with that. But uh, so at this point, what we're gonna do to finish it off, I'm just gonna take my super glue my head cement I'm gonna run it up and down my thread about an inch and I'm just gonna place about three wraps over and if you're going through for the colored thread look you may need to double up on your color again here and while that th uh, while that glue is drying you want to whip finish this thing with just about three more wraps three four now when you're pulling this grab that bead and pull that tight and more often, oh, see how hard I pulled it? I angled it all the way up. More often than not, what's going to happen is it's just going to suck all that material uh, right down into behind the bead. Now to shape it. The fly is done. But now to shape it, what you want to do is take a toothbrush and start to shape it in this manner. We can't get underneath, whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to bump the camera, but we can't get underneath because the fly is in the vise. So the better way to do this is take this out. I'm right-handed, so I want to grab it with my left thumb, left index, right on the bead. And you can start to do this number, just like this. It's better to do this same exact motion on a flat surface on your table. And start to draw it back. Two, you know, five, six, seven, eight strokes one way. Brush it all together. So that way when you bring it back up, it's shaped like this. Uh, you can choose to pull this little bit of tail off if you want. And if you want to actually form the fly before you take it fishing, which is not uncommon for flies like this, uh, you just simply take it. Oh, where's my, my already example? You just take it and you dunk it in some water. Uh, and as it's wet, you form the fly. So you, you put it right back down on the table after you've completely soaked it. And you start to draw the water out. And then if you want to give it the uh, balance test, you add a piece of mono. You want the nose of the fly either totally level or aiming slightly down so that way when you've tied on it's jigging like well, I can't really do it because I've just got this little short piece of mono but um, so that's it and that's how you that's how you can tie uh, you know basically a shiny balanced leech it's very simple to tie when this gets in the water it's going to expand too a little bit so don't think it's going to stay constricted like this uh, this is a still water fly so there you go. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I always appreciate that. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, this particular fly is a part of the fly tying classes that we do over at Fly Tying for Beginners. This is week five of the jig hook session. Uh, this session is just based on uh, what we can do with uh, uh, jig hooks and uh, kind of help you explore explore that territory um, so you can get it kind of get a feel for them before you go out and jump into them and buy them so other than that uh, you can buy all this stuff uh, material kits and everything if you want to over at flyvault.net uh, and other than that guys happy tying gals for that matter happy tying uh, take care and uh, we'll see you next time <laughs>